every day I get an opportunity to talk about this new era of innovation we're in. Whether you call it the fourth industrial revolution or the third digital wave, we're seeing a collision of the digital and physical worlds. This new type of innovation is driving inputs from lots of different sources, lots of things and lots of people. And I believe that when you bring lots of people together, we can solve really big challenges that can have huge impact. And today, we can do this because of the tools that we have. I'm very proud to be one of the co-founders of UI Labs. We're a tech organization passionate about innovation and have a fundamental belief that no problem is too big to solve if you bring the right players together. Today, we're getting inputs from, like I said, lots of things, lots of people. This is giving us an unprecedented opportunity to innovate in new ways. We're bringing together devices and people in ways that never dreamed possible before. In the next couple of years, we're gonna see over 50 billion connected devices. So let me give you an example of the kinds of innovation that I think are possible today. Let's take an example like autonomous vehicles. I think the big promise with autonomous vehicles or AVs are things like better energy efficiency, better energy usage, fewer pedestrian fatalities, safer roads. Maybe you're thinking better convenience, maybe multitasking on the way to work. This type of opportunity though is much bigger than the technology. It's also about how that technology interacts with other technology and how technology interacts with people. So let's take the self-driving car itself. The technology is very innovative in and of itself. You've got the GPS, the sensors, the cameras. These are the things that help the car stay on the road, not run into pedestrians or other traffic, manage a speed limit, and that's incredible technology. But the bigger promise is really about connected mobility. And that's a problem that Ford can't solve on its own. It's a problem that BMW can't solve on its own. But when you bring together multiple players, you can realize the promise of a connected transportation infrastructure. So now let's imagine that same self-driving car going down the road, and imagine what happens when it begins to interact with the street lamps around it. And so take the street lamp that might be a couple miles down the road, and maybe that street lamp doesn't turn on until the car is actually approaching. Maybe we get a little bit more sophisticated, and that street lamp actually is able to identify that there is a parking spot below it. And that parking spot is near a retail store that you know, the retail store owner wouldn't mind if that passenger or driver ends up in their shop. So now what started off as a car company issue has now involved the manufacturer of the street lamp, the city worker that installed the street lamp, the city that owns the street lamp, the retail store owner, and bringing all these people together creates a whole new set of possibilities. We haven't even talked about the fact that to be able to let all these signals interact with one another, you also need to bring in the wireless network provider. You probably have regulatory and privacy and security now uh, issues that you need to be thinking about as well, and you've got federal agencies. So again, we start off as a car company problem and we've brought in the local municipality, federal agencies, the local utility, the light bulb manufacturer, the retail store owner, and bringing all these groups together, now we can realize the promise of something like connected mobility. So what's different? Why are we able to talk about these things today? We weren't able to necessarily solve them or address these big opportunities before. Well, data is changing everything. I said we're connecting everybody and everything. And by doing that, we're creating lots of data. And where we couldn't collect data before, we now have really cheap sensors that allow us to collect even more data. But what's more than that, we also have the computing power and the speed that allows us to be able to make sense of that data and doing so at reasonable time and costs. So now we can take that data and turn it into information, and that information allows us to be able to solve new types of problems. You bring all these new types of technology together, data and sensors, artificial intelligence, machine learning, We've got all sorts of incredible tools at our fingertips. But it's how you bring those tools in combination with people and bring all those people pieces together that actually allow us to achieve greater things than we were ever imagined possible before. So who has to be involved in something like this? Well, you need large industry players, large companies, companies who realize that they've got to redefine their industry or be disrupted themselves. You need to bring together innovators, 
innovators might come from startup communities, they might come from universities. And you've got to bring these innovators and the game-changing technologies together with customers and buyers and partners, investors. You've got to look at what the small and mid-sized companies, the legacy companies, because these are the companies that have been the lifeblood of the US since we began. And then you've got to think about the government providers as well. Who are the policymakers that are putting a stake in the ground saying that we have an opportunity to do something if we can you know, provide the, the landscape and the environment for these types of interactions to happen? When you bring all these players together, you can do pretty incredible things. So let me tell you about a project that we're working on right here in Chicago. Some of you may know that in 1871, there was the Great Chicago Fire. And the Great Chicago Fire destroyed our entire city. But, you know, we are scrappy, and what did we do? We built a new city on top of the old. And that has created a very complex infrastructure below ground that's even gets more complex year by year. We've got all sorts of old assets, from fiber to electric utilities to gas pipes, subway infrastructure. There's lots of things going on beneath, our, beneath the streets here in Chicago. And while we do have paper data and paper maps that show us that, Unfortunately, often the data is inaccurate, sometimes it's obsolete, and it leads to all sorts of problems in terms of coordination. And in fact, every 60 seconds in the US alone, we see that a utility pipe is hit. When a utility line is hit, that causes all sorts of unplanned <laughs> events and leads to about a $1.6 billion problem. The value in solving that problem is in fact much bigger because that's not factoring in things like the inconvenience to your life when the power goes out once again. So what we're doing is looking at how can we create a map of the underground that is accurate, that's responsive, that's dynamic, that builds on itself over time. And so we're empowering first the city worker, the utility worker, the construction worker, the person at the excavation site, taking their smartphone, being able to take a picture of the excavation site, and then that photo gets turned into a, through vi visual processing technology and advanced computing, gets turned into a 3D point cloud. That point cloud or that 3D image, or that virtual image, then gets transposed with visualization technology and where you can actually tag the assets that you're seeing. So you understand, okay, that's a water pipe and it's owned by this person and you know, that's the gas line that's owned by that utility. And that kind of information can also get combined with other sources of data. And those other sources of data, now when you apply things like artificial intelligence, can actually take the map of one site and extend it across an entire city block or multiple city blocks. So imagine what we're talking about here, using artificial intelligence so that we don't have to tear up the entire streets or the entire underground of Chicago for us to be able to create this kind of map. But this takes lots of groups coming together. And that's exactly what we did here in Chicago. We brought together groups, big companies like Accenture and Microsoft, startup companies like City Zenith, universities like the University of Illinois, the electric utility, three city departments. It was bringing together all these people that were required for us to be able to create this kind of tool that goes from way above in the, in the sky and can help us see what's beneath our feet in Chicago. Who owns it? What's it used for? When was it last updated? And allows us to now create a 3D engineering grade map of what's beneath our feet. You can imagine now having this kind of information, it can be shared across city workers, across utilities, construction workers, and now we can better coordinate what happens in terms of construction or utility work allows it, maybe for those of you living in Chicago, to not have your street torn up multiple times in the same summer and you're thinking to yourself, didn't they bother coordinating this? I see some heads nodding, so you know what I mean. There's all sorts of accidents and delays that are able to be prevented now because we have this kind of information. And this wouldn't have been possible, because this was a dream of a lot of people for a long time, if it wasn't for bringing these people together to solve this problem. So innovations like this are not exactly sexy innovations. They're not what's gonna be the map, the little app on your phone that you know maybe was created by two guys in a garage. We're talking about big technology innovations. And these are affecting every industry around us, oil and gas, aerospace and defense, healthcare. But what it's also doing is creating a whole generation of innovators outside of what we might think of as the typical technology innovator. We're talking about empowering not just people like the, the utility worker, the construction worker, but the machinist and the farmer and the physician and the uh, 
engine manufacturer. All of these people are able to come together now and be empowered to solve really big problems. So imagine when we can now t go outside of typical tech cogs like sh Silicon Valley and look at what a city like Chicago that might have unique assets, unique capabilities, what we can solve. And it, again, it comes back to the people. People ask me every day, are technology taking away our jobs? And I would argue, in fact, quite the opposite. These big, hairy problems are only going to be solved when people and technology come together in ways that they've never been able to before. So as you leave here today, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to be thinking about what are the big problems that you want to solve? What are the problems that now can be solved by bringing together the technology and the tools and the people? And most importantly, who are you going to work with to solve those problems? Thank you so much. <laughs>